Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to separate line art and fill using symbols. I started with this little bird, grouped it and turned it into a symbol. Let's turn on the symbol panel in View Studio Symbols. It shows all the symbols currently in this document, which there is just one of the bird. I duplicate it and then turn the sync off for this duplicate. That's the key to making changes that will not be copied onto all symbols. I can now go ahead and make changes just to this one. I give it a white fill and a black outline. The elements that don't need to be visible in my line art, I just turn to transparent, stroke, as well as the fill. The key is not to delete objects from this symbol because then it is no longer a duplicate that is synchronized with the core symbol. So you got to keep all the elements and just make them invisible by turning them transparent. Lastly, I fix the eyes to turn them back into their original look with the black eye and the white highlights. And now I have a line art version of the bird. The reason I keep the fill white is if I would turn that transparent, you would see the line of the body behind the beak so turning everything white will cover those lines and then the key is to use a different layer blend mode rather than go with normal i go with the multiply now if i change the symbol to multiply it will change all symbols to multiply so i group it first then the effect will just be on the group so now the group is multiplied and we have the line art on top of our bird. And I can now go in and change things. If I move the nodes, and as you can see, I'm in the line art symbol. I turn the synchronize back on in order to affect the fill as well. I make changes to the beak and the color version of the beak will be altered as well. Do the same thing with the legs. I can turn nodes, move nodes, I can bend things, I can add nodes, and those versions will be updated. The one thing I didn't do in this video is alter the pressure curve of the strokes, but it will work just the same. You can adjust the stroke pressure in the line panel to create more dynamic looking outlines. You can see I can easily scale, move or alter objects and seeing it's a symbol, the duplicate of the symbol will be affected just the same. Taking the wing, I rotate it, I move it and the fill version will adjust with all the clip elements inside. Just make sure you haven't accidentally turned on the lock for the child objects, cause then they would stay in place while you move the base shape. I can also add effects to the line art, turn it to transparent. In this case, it's just 80% multiply. So it's more see-through or I add a color overlay. Now adding the color overlay usually means that the whole shape will be colored. As you can see now I have just a black silhouette. But if I adjust that to a different blend mode in order to that I change the color to something that is more visible, 
and then go in and say I don't want this to be normal an overlay won't work it'll still cover everything but if I change that to lighter color seeing we worked with a black outline on a white fill black is the darkest color so whatever I put on top will be colored in that tone I can now choose the color and the opacity at the moment it's still set to 40% so there is still the dark of the black outline and it's just given a tint of blue on top so it's rather flexible and easy to use play around with it the synchronizing of symbols is a great feature as long as you keep all the elements in place it's definitely a feature worth exploring more if you learned something new in this video please like it subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see on my channel or on my blog and I'll see you again soon.